Hello everyone and welcome back to WAW Bandai product and figure review. I want to do a quick shout out to all of my subscribers. We managed to get to 147 subscribers. Let's try to get that 150 to for this channel because the um, more subscribers I get, the more content that I'm going to be able to create. So thank you again for all of your support. And thank you for all of those views from my last video, which I managed to get close to 80 views on that video. So thank you so much for your interest in that one. And definitely look forward to the um, making of the diorama for that particular model. Speaking of models, let's take a look at the current one that we are going to be reviewing today. And it's, if my memory serves right, this is actually the first real grade model that I am going to be reviewing on this channel. So without further ado, let's take a look at Shinenju from Mobile Suit Gundam Unicorn. So this is a real grade 144 scale uh, model kit. So this has a lot of detail. The price is not too bad. I managed to get it for like a hundred and uh, not a hundred. Sorry, I got it for forty dollars. But retail price, it's about fifty dollars, depending on where you can find it. Um, overall, the art on here is gorgeous. As you can see, this is um, more like closer to like Char's mobile suit. Um, so with the iconic red and gold is the uh, motif for this particular unit. And this is the main enemy unit for the Gundam Unicorn series. And as we can see, it's it looks really, really good. It still has that cycloptic look to it, like how the Zakus are. Um, but yeah, overall, this looks really, really nice. So let's take a look at the back or the side of the box. And again, if I could read Japanese, I could read that out to you. But as you can see, this does have a internal frame right here. And then it shows various other um, like extensions for the jet nozzles and uh, cockpits for the, the, the details. So it even gives us how the um, some of the runner parts look like. And then we have a cool kind of action pose at the on the other side. And on these other sides is just kind of showing that this is number 22 in the series. So the the thing with real grades is that they are numbered uh, most like um, most of the other ones, but these are like numbered for like when they were released. So let's take a look inside and look how awesome this kit actually is So this is the top of the box. So again, I really like how it's uh, really, really sharp with the, the detail on here. It's giving us a really good foreshadowing of what to expect out of this kit. So let's open this up real quick. And like always, let's just kind of dig the instruction manual out of the bottom of the box. And now we can just set that aside for right now and let's take a look at the instruction manual. Um, this is going to be kind of interesting because this is actually going to be more of a standard pamphlet compared to, you know, the accordion thing where it kind of got a little confusing. So this is uh, the Shinenju and 144 scale real grade. So yeah, this is already looking fairly nice for just the top of the cover. The back of the cover gives us uh, stickers and yeah, so it gives us sticker layout for a lot of the parts. A lot of these are optional for the parts because um, depending on how show accurate you want to do this. 
Um, but yeah, so it even gives you uh, a pilot too uh, that stands outside. So I would almost recommend, highly recommending, seeing if you can find uh, water slides to do a lot of the detail that's going to be required to do this model. So let's move on to the inside of this. So this is definitely going to be giving us uh, a really cool rundown through how many runners we actually have. So there's actually quite a few runners with this model kit. Uh, this does have an, uh, an internal skeleton that you would just basically snap the armor pieces on. So that's the, the hallmark of most uh, real grade model kits is this internal frame. So if you ever wanted to do like customization, a lot of these internal frames actually go well with each other. So that's an option for doing customization. Uh, this also tells you how some of the pieces are supposed to go what to look for for cutting for um, sprue marks and nubs just to make sure you are cutting the right pieces and not cutting anything that you're not supposed to. So overall it's looking pretty good. So this gives us the leg units and as we can see with the instruction manual it does give us nice step by step on how to put these together. Again you can paint these as you go and it tells you which part of the internal frame that these all go on to so this is just basically a standard walkthrough on how the mechanics work of the leg so that's actually the cool thing with the internal um, the internal frame for the this it helps you get a much cooler and more uh, dynamic um, posability and articulation for this with how the armor pieces interact with how the, the leg moves. Same thing with the uh, the side joints again. Um, it's really interesting for how some of these pieces are actually put together. Um, based off of what I've actually seen on here, it looks like there are several pieces for this that are actually multiple pieces. Uh, we're gonna probably take a look when we actually uh, start looking at that uh, then we have the arm portion of this again it shows us how uh, reposable this um, unit is going to be and then we have another cool little action arc um, picture here showcasing different variety of posability detail for this model which is like a fire engine red Moving on to the other page. Again, a lot of this is self-explanatory on how the pieces come together for the, the shoulder armor, the torso, and how everything pieces together. Um, when it comes to the um, fuel tanks, this is the part that I still really kind of just dislike. They could have, I could have, they could have had them into like kind of separate pieces, kind of like the. Um, I have one that I'm currently working on that actually had the fuel tanks in three sections that just squished together and uh, it's where these lines were um, on the sear for that model. So we also have the head units, various pieces for that. And then we have the, the jet pack and the blaster and sh iconic shield for this. This also gives you the option of adding uh, a bazooka to the um, the rifle or to the shield and as we can see from the shield and this is actually the part where I'm seeing this a lot with the armor and any other gold pieces is there are black pieces that literally go on top of the gold pieces this whole section here is gold holographic like holographic gold and these are black pieces that just slide right in and it looks like the cuffs, chest armor, and anything that actually had the gold trim, you don't need any decals for or stickers compared to the high grade Shinenju that I'll probably do a video review over my progress on that and just kind of go over on how that high grade went together. Uh, but yeah, that's going to make the lines much sharper, more crisp. So that gives you a lot more flexibility with really painting high detail 
to make it look nice and shiny to the point where you can actually paint it even more glossy and shiny. Moving on to the few back pages on here, it just shows, like I was saying, the customization between the, the rifle, the where you can add the uh, grenade launcher to the bottom of the barrel and how it comes on and how it comes off. Same with the shield. And it shows how you can put the shield on and how it kind of connects to the uh, some of the blaster armor, uh, jet nozzles portion of the armor. And how some of these uh, dual, uh, dual wield blades are. So that's actually kind of cool. And you can also have it where it connects to here. Where how my um, real grain and the 1100 that I actually have uh, has that same feature with that. And thus, we are concluded with the instruction manual for this model. Again, oopsie, this does give us a color guide right here on what all the colors. So you could use Gundam markers, uh, acrylic paints, and or enamels to paint this. Usually, Tamiya and the Gundam markers actually do fairly well, depending on what you're trying to paint. So... I'll probably do a review on uh, colors that you could probably use for your Gundams to help with hand painting or airbrushing. But moving on to the actual model kit itself, we'll start out with this. Alright, so let's start off with just the, the sticker sheet. So... Let us zoom in on that if my camera will nicely work. Okay, so the camera's not working the way I want. So this gives us quite a few detail with a lot of uh, gold uh, white. Um, you can try to see uh, when it's like reflecting um, a lot of white parts. We also have a lot of metallic gold and other uh, metallic surface so I might experiment with these just because these look like they would go on a little bit better so this is actually a pretty good uh, sticker sheets um, for this unit and it has a lot of the other stuff so I might experiment with how these go on again this model kit came out in 2016 so I'm hoping that some of these parts uh, for these stickers go on fairly well since it's somewhat of a newer kit Moving on to the runners. So this is the part where I'm actually kind of impressed with is that you can actually see how it's actually cut out for the shield for that area. And that goes for as well with the other portions for the top and bottom of the, the shield for the black. So that's actually pretty cool and even has it with various chess pieces for this um for the shinenju too so that's actually the biggest thing here is that um the gold is actually the parts that actually show the most and that's actually pretty impressive for how that looks so i'm really stoked when i start building this to see how well that all goes together so again this is mostly for like the black for the chest, feet, and various other armor pieces and cuffs. We also have the, the neck guard here. And yeah, so it's more of a black. So this would be more of a uh, metallic black if you wanted to choose to make it more of a metallic look. So again, overall, it's a nice feel to it. It's really nice molding. Not a lot of um, flash on here, so cleaning parts would be fairly easy. Moving on to the gray portion, which I would probably use a German gray for painting this. Uh, I have a few other colors too, but overall this is where we have, start seeing the jet nozzles, uh, more of the um, armor frame that will go on top of the inner frame, and top of the chest um this is more for the neck region here actually and then we have uh i believe this might actually be the the capsule for the pilots uh so we'll try to find the pilot seat if that's the case 
Uh, and so, yeah, that's this particular runner. Again, it's a nice grayish color, um, like a German gray. So painting that would not be too bad. Um, I would recommend maybe even dark iron would be a good color. But if you want to try to keep it more show accurate, uh, German gray would actually be a better color. So we got a few other parts here. Let's take a look at this. Again, we have more yellow parts here, so I would highly recommend. Um, for me, I like painting a lot of these like copper, like dark copper or a burnt metal kind of color, since these are more vents and uh, how I see vents not necessarily as yellow, but more of a like copper or like jet exhaust kind of color for for these. So again, it's a nice orangey yellow. You can definitely paint very good detail on here if you just wanted to have it stay the yellow. You have very good options to give this still some contrast to it. Moving on, we have, I believe, duplicate parts. Um, no, we actually, these are two different, um, two different runners. So these are again going to, this is actually a lot of duplicates. So we already kind of looked at this, which was an internal armor frame uh, with, various other pieces for hoses, the back of the neck, jet nozzles. So we can skip that one and go on to this one, which has the um, saber for the, the energy saber, various joints. And yeah, so it's again, another uh, dark gray. So this is gonna be more of a German gray when you're wanting to paint and detail this. So let's move on to some of the other parts here. This is where we're actually starting to see some interesting color contrast compared to how the um, high grade the, um, model is. And that is the fact that we actually have very extra silver parts here. So we actually have some duplicate parts. And these are for the jet nozzles for the shoulder boosters and various other boosters. So yeah, this is a nice silvery color. Uh, so this will be probably either a gunmetal or um, flat aluminum would be a really good one if you wanted to make it sh uh, sheen, to give a sheen to it. So overall, it's really nice plastic, not a lot of uh, f uh, flash on the, on the model. So this is actually duplicate parts, so just definitely pay attention to when you're working with that. Next up, we're starting to get into our red. And this is a nice kind of like fire engine red. It's already really nice and smooth and shiny. So there's not a lot of flash on these parts. Uh, yeah, it's actually really looking nicely. It's nice and shiny already. So you're not gonna have to do much for like polishing if you just wanted to do a quick straight build. It is already really nice and shiny. I would almost say just take a polishing uh, polymer and just kind of doing a nice brush over with them just to hide some of the the flash that is still left over but overall that is really nice and we can see how nice the the shield portion is and again this is going to be like sandwich so this is all going to be like the red uh, if you really wanted to do really cool detail this part of the shield technically needs to be painted so you could easily just kind of mask this entire area off and just spray that gray but that's uh that's me if i wanted to do more accuracy towards how the the shield looks but yeah that's really a nice really red color next up we have various other joints and this is where we have the hands where we have uh a, a closed fist open hand and we have also very other uh, joints, connecting pieces for like the shield. But yeah, and again, this is a nice German gray, not a lot of flash on this. Very good detail. Uh, you can do a lot with uh, like Gundam marker, panel liners. So to give these a kind of a cool kind of more depth to it. But a lot of this is going to be inside the armor. So... 
it comes down to how much detail you actually want to put on them. So moving on to more of the red pieces here. I believe this is going to be the last of the red. <clears throat> and again, we have, I believe these are both duplicate. Yes, Runner D is our duplicate runners. So the parts for this are going to be the side of the legs, shoulder armor. Uh, it looks like the shoulder itself is in two pieces. But fortunately, you're not going to have to worry about that seam because it looks like there is another armor piece that goes on top of this, which I believe this is that armor piece that just slides right on top of there. So you don't really have to worry about that for a seam. You also have the uh, red boosters for like the backpack booster as two separate pieces that would just slide in instead of being a single piece so there might be some really cool flexibility that you can do with that and various other um, red joints again there's not a lot of flash on here so or yeah it's really nice really shiny red so if you get a good pair of nippers and a really nice sanding stick you can really just polish these off and have a really cool looking kit just right out of the box so yeah those were the red portions on here so, and this is the the part where i'm not really looking too forward to because granted uh the fuel tanks are in two separate pieces so that's the part that i kind of don't like but we'll take a look at the internal arm armor frame and as you can see it is really simple uh, it's a like a pvc kind of base plastic so it's very flexible very um movable because these are all hinged joints so this is the part that's going to give us the most articulation out of most of the 144 scale kits uh, and i have a quite a bit of these 144 scale kits so definitely look forward to more reviews if this one turned out to be very popular and I have a quite a few backlog for these. But yeah, this is already looking really well. I've already built a couple real great. So I could probably do uh, show you guys a review on how well those turned out. But yeah, that's uh, a really nice uh, how that's uh, another like a kind of a darker, like real darker gray for that. Uh, now moving on to the weapons and the fuel tanks. So it looks like the, the nozzles for the um, jetpack are all white and they are separate pieces. Unlike the one that I'm currently working on, it, they were both solid pieces. We also have the clear monocle or the green eye. And it looks like if you're very good at wiring, you might be able to have this light up. We also have the blaster, which comprises of two pieces each, uh, both a left and right side. So I would definitely get some putty and or uh, a way of trying to fill that in with either uh, to me as glue just to fill seams. And we also have the uh, grenade launcher which is also it comprises of two pieces and we also have the barrel and the portion to basically click onto the, the rifle itself. And then we have the iconic hoses for both the head, side, uh, waste unit actually and then the sides and then we have the scopes for the blaster here the fuel tanks again this is the part that I don't like is the fact that they are separate pieces but the kind of the cool thing is that I don't have to paint these center pieces here so those all are going to be like a little plus sign and they're just going to get stuck right in there and so uh painting wise that might actually be a pain in the butt because i'll probably end up having to repaint it anyway uh but that's just how these tanks look so that's going to be by far the biggest challenge is trying to get those to look decent with the the straight line when i'm doing that 
And now I kind of saved the last couple of runners here for last. And these are going to be our gold pieces and energy weapons. So I was, out of everything in this kit, this is the part that I was looking forward to the most. And look at that. Look how gorgeous that shine is. And that is already not even painted. You just watched me pull this right out of the bag. And look how shiny that is. Look at the detail that goes on to this. It is phenomenal with how cool and nice and shiny this is. I literally am going to have to find a chrome gold to go with this for me to properly paint this or learn how to really polish because a lot of this is just going to be straight on the uh the model itself so this is gorgeous on how well the detail is just be very careful when um putting these and snapping these in because it looks like they could snap very easily uh, i haven't tried pressing these in but yeah we got the the cuffs for the the sides and the top portions we also have parts for the the hip joints where the hoses connect and various other uh detail that i'm currently working on by hand painting so this is going to save so much time and effort because i could just spray this all gold with a much shinier gold which i don't know if i can even find a shinier gold i might have to experiment and find a shade of gold that's going to be this metallic, this shiny. So that's actually the coolest part of this model that I was highly anticipating was the fact that this has such cool gold on here. And lastly, we have the energy weapons. And this is actually kind of cool that we have two, ver um, two of the same runner there we go and basically it gives us really cool and these are not pvc this actually feels like a much harder much sturdier plastic so what i might end up having to do is maybe find like because this is a lemony color i might need to do a mix with a clear coat with some green and blue to get uh or a uh, yellow to give me this more limey kind of color to do a spray for a clear coat because these are much much more solid than what i was thinking so these are not uh pvc this is hard hard clear plastic so that's going to give it where the more sturdy and better chances of you know polishing it and trimming it out without it having to but you don't get much of a bend factor because of how tough it is but a lot of these aren't going to be bending that much anyway so yeah that was the shinenju model kit that we had here so yeah so i hope you guys enjoyed this video of the shinenju 144 scale real grade 144 scale so this is going to be a really fun kit. There's a lot of parts to this, but there's a lot of fa factors with this kit that is highly desirable for people that don't like doing a lot of detail work or wanting to do a lot of painting for some of those because a lot of the units from this series, especially the, the Zakus and uh, the Shinenju, they have a, a lot of detail with those little crest emblems and stuff so with the fact that this actually has uh, gold parts already made and all i have to do is put black pieces on that saves so much time and effort and can make this kit look much sharper without having any uh spillover for paint or anything like that so again a big shout out to everyone that's supporting this channel if you have any future ideas or reviews for any particular models or any figures that are bandai related or if you want to even see me play some uh bandai namco video games i got something cooked up um later down for, for 
videos but again let's see if we can try to get to 150 subscribers we're that close to getting that many subscribers on this channel and trust me i got boxes upon boxes of gundam and figures to review for this channel so i'm in no short supply also leave likes and comments on what you found interesting about this video and other future videos that you would like to be featured on here because i'm trying to get a few of the new witch from mercury um model kits so i'm waiting to get my pre-order so that just was released in on the 31st of um july so i'm still waiting to hear back from my local hobby shop when they get it in so definitely look forward to that review when i get that so that's going to be a fresh review when that sucker basically gets on my doorstep so again thank you so much for um liking this video and watching as far as i did and i will see you guys in the next episode